Hello, hello, and welcome to In The Loop. What a beautiful Friday it is. I'm hoping you're enjoying what the last, sort of almost the last week of May. Um, today is a special episode of In The Loop. As you know, this is our What To Watch for June 2023. For those of you who are brand new to the show, hello, I am Winnie Sun. I want to keep you posted in all things business finance. And you, my friends, we are so grateful to have you here as part of our audience. Um, thank you so much for joining us live. We'd love to see you engage and share with us throughout the show. And of course, a big welcome to In The Loop with Winnie and Greg. Of course, you're here to see Greg. I'm excited to see Greg. Let's bring him in because... Hello, welcome, Greg. How are you? Hello, I am doing good. For those of you that haven't seen me in the last two weeks, I probably look you a little bit different. Uh, <laughs> I got a haircut. Um, and, uh, you know, it's not what I went in to get. I'll just say that. But I'm, I'm okay with it. I think it's going to work out all right. But I'm, I do have a word of warning, though, for everybody. If you do have a regular person who cuts your hair, stick to that person. Uh, don't, don't surprise change it. Or a quick trim. And also, when they ask whether to use scissors or a razor when they're doing the trim, always say scissors unless you want a nice short haircut. So that's what happens. Like, it is gone. But you know what? It's summer, so it's a little bit lighter. It's actually the shortest I've had it in probably a very long time. So it kind of it's kind of good. Uh, regardless it, of my hair, <laughs> yeah, and yeah, you know, it's it's lighter, you know, it's not as hot. So so this is all good. Uh, but regardless of that, hi, everybody. It is good to be back here and good to be here with Winnie. And thanks for everybody for joining in. You know, if you don't know who I am, I'm a longtime tech reporter. Now I'm a news reporter and producer and uh, covering all kinds of different things. But here we get to have fun. And uh, well, we talk about a lot of stuff on this show. But uh, today, I'm not talking about tech. We are talking about what to stream coming up here in just a little bit. This is our favorite, uh, one of my favorite things that we do is at the end of the month or beginning of the month, talk about what's coming up, what you can watch, maybe some shows that you haven't seen before, maybe you haven't heard of them. We always like suggestions too, so we are live, so you can drop in your comments, whatever platform you're on, let us know what you're watching or what you think that uh, you know maybe we should check out. But I know for, for all of these shows though, we always start off with Winnie telling us what's going on in the world of the world of finances, the world of the markets, uh, Winnie's world as it would be. And uh, it's always good to find out what's happening. <laughs> A creepy world, <laughs> okay. In a world, I know. In a world, but I'm, I'm excited, Greg, because I feel like you know it's almost summer, so there's gonna be a lot yeah. of things for us to watch. But yeah, before we get there, why don't we deal with this? Because this is sort of really, really creepy, Greg. It's you probably been hearing about the debt ceiling and the U.S. economy not doing so well, owing way more money than they're bringing in. Not way more, but more money than they're bringing in. And you know, are we gonna? Is our debt going to default well? So that's what's impacting the financial markets. But on a positive note, let me tell you how the market is doing currently. The market's still open. Currently, the Dow's um, up about 283 points. The Nasdaq's up about 263 points. And the S&P is up about 47 points. And so why is that? I want to answer that question. The reason that is, is because earlier this week, the market was down tremendously almost every single day. But of course, now... Uh, it seems like the two parties, uh, the two parties of our government uh, are giving us sort of an inkling that there might negotiations might be closing um, soon and there might be a two year compromise agreement. And so investors really were just hoping for that indication that, in fact, the default wasn't going to take place. And June 1st is just next Thursday. And that was a deadline to get this deal done. Otherwise, multiple branches of the government would be closed. A lot of people would lose their benefits, like Social Security and Medicare and all those things like that. So it looks like House Republicans um, are aiming to rescind some of the $80 billion that were allocated for the IRS. And there's going to be a House vote on raising the debt limit, which could be... Um, 
as soon as next Tuesday, which is really good. And then Senate will be then voting on Wednesday. There's been a lot of optimism on the markets, as you're seeing right now, for this potential compromise. And so they're saying that using some of these rescinded IRS funds could actually help cover the, the domestic funding shortfall that we have in the United States. So Pentagon, veterans' health benefits are going to be protected from these cuts, which is great. Um, uh, funding set to increase, in fact, on that. But the IRS funding trade-off, that's going to be the issue. So this is, as you know, is happening uh with Biden and, you know, and McCartney and everybody else, McCarthy. And so that's what we're seeing today. Now, the other story that I'm going to just share with you before we get to the fun stuff is this one, because this is a story I really want to talk to with Greg, because this is, I thought it was a really kind of a cool story. This came from my friend, Jeff um, Cox at CNBC and talking about whether or not AI is going to be able to save the U.S. economy. Now, why is that? This, I feel like, is a perfect meld of this show, Greg, coming together with you. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> yeah, because economists are predicting that AI could actually bring so many changes over the next few years that this would help, help uh, improve the reduced demand for foreign labor and automation of coding and creative writing. And this could be very transformative for a lot of things that Americans depend on for our U.S. economy. What do you think, Greg? Your thoughts? Huh. That, I mean, it. I like the idea of something optimistic when it comes to that, uh, as far as AI, you know, improving the economy, because a lot of what you see is that, you know, AI is going to take away all these jobs. It's going to change everything, um, you know, to take a lot of stuff away and, and re just replace people. But the idea that it's going to change the economy and potentially for the good, I really like that idea that this could, this could change things. I, I want to know more about it. Yeah. Just what exactly they're saying is going to be, you know, how it's going to improve it. But I guess freeing people up to do other things, perhaps mm -hmm. some of the some of the jobs that are a little bit more tedious, maybe they'd have more time to do other things. Well, that makes money, and yeah. um, I'd be speculating on that. But I I like we, this. Mm -hmm. I like the I like the positivity. Yeah. So let me share some of the things that that Jeff yeah. talks about in this article. I think this is, of course, this is, of course, one of the many reasons why I want to talk to you about this, because he's saying that AI could play a significant role in personalized shopping, um, mm -hmm. self-driven -dri cars, of course. And this one I know you love robotics and healthcare, gaming and improving finance and really just becoming a part of everyone's lives, making things much more efficient, using less energy, getting to those answers yeah. and those solutions more quickly. And that, um, you know, products like ChatGPT they're talking about and conversational chat bot, uh, bot set, this just kind of demonstrates just the beginning of just the potential mm -hmm. and value of AI that really this would allow for, like you said, more creativity to take place and just sort of those like really difficult, demanding jobs that maybe a lot of Americans don't have an interest in doing that we did rely on foreign labor, right? Or manufacturing, that a lot of it can come back to the United States thanks to AI. Yeah, I mean, and some stuff that's time intensive or even jobs that may be dangerous, you know, having having AI, well, I guess that's more robotics, but still if AI is tied into that as well. Um, yeah, I mean, there's definitely a lot of things that I think AI can really improve, you know, our our lives on. And, and that's taking away those tedious tasks, taking away things that maybe people don't want to do. And yeah, if it opens up more opportunities, more jobs, more more ways for people to make money, I think that's great. I mean, the, the thing is, regardless of whatever it's going to do, AI isn't going away. You know, it's, it's happening. So okay. I think planning ahead and trying to look at the different ways that it could affect is really good. And yeah, this could be something that's that's really positive and maybe it it's helps. Good, huh? Yeah, it, it could be. I don't think it's going to be completely rosy or completely, you know, we're going into Terminator days. I think it may be somewhere in the middle, but I like the idea that, you know, yeah, there's going to be some benefits. There's going to be some benefits. Yeah. And by the way, we got to welcome Joshua Cross Expire joining YouTube Live and really saying Hello. nice haircut. Right? You're getting a nice haircut. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yep, it's uh, it's different, <laughs> but I, I I like it. It's good. It's good. It, it's different, but I think <laughs> you, you pulled off really well. So it weirds me out every time I look. Like I keep looking at my own screen here, at my monitors below here. I'm like, who is that? Oh yeah, that's 
that's my hair. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's still weirding me out. It's been like a week. I hear but. you because there's one time so I was in New York. Uh, uh, Curtis was with me. I, and we're, I went on the show, uh, Megyn Kelly's show. And before that, I was like, okay, I'm going on Megyn Kelly. And every, everybody who's seen Megyn Kelly, the past Megyn Kelly anyway, well, she's just beautiful person, right? Beautiful blonde. Like Her hair is like perfect. Well, I was like, okay, I should get my hair done. And so they they turned me into a poodle. They curled my hair so hard. And I, I hear you. I, so from then on, I'll, I told um, Robin, my publicist, and Curtis, who's my creator, I'm like, never again. I'm always going to do my own hair from now on for anything <laughs> like that. So maybe, Greg, you'll be cutting your own hair. I don't know. <laughs> well, I'll just go to my actual guy who knows what I want. I, I made the mistake, and I went elsewhere, and I paid the – you know, I learned my lesson. I told my, my buddy Gil that, too. He's who cuts my hair. I'm like – Gil, I made a mistake. Uh, <laughs> I'll see you in about a month. And uh, <laughs> my never <bad>. again. <laughs> but and no, it's not. It's not a terrible haircut. It's just different. That's all. <laughs> sorry, fun, fun. All right, Greg. Well, you gotta. I'm gonna. Okay. I'm gonna throw the baton over to you because I want to see what you have to share with us this week. Okay. We I've missed got... you last week. We really missed you last week. Yeah, I know. And sorry about that. That was that was my uh, my bad that we couldn't do the show last week. But I'm glad we're here this week. And I do have some shows. So it's what to stream. Now, this first one is going to sound very daunting when I say it. But I tried to really pick some things that at least maybe maybe you've heard of them. Maybe you haven't. But you, but perhaps you're you're not aware of them. So this first one is called Evil. <laughs> and so <laughs> we're going straight at it here. Now, it's kind of an ironic term. I mean, yes. There, it's it's got some of that to it, but what this show is about, it's um, if you're a fan of X Files or shows where it's like they're investigating things, but there's also a little bit of comedy to it. This would be right up your alley. So, evil. The premise is this: there's um, a guy who's becoming a Catholic priest, and he works for for the church, and they go out and they investigate supernatural things to see if it's related to an, you know, an exorcism or is somebody possessed or, or all kinds of different things. Is there a ghost? And they have him team up with a psychologist who does not believe in any of that. And then a guy who's very oriented towards technology and science. So like a scientist, a psychologist and a priest. So that's kind of like a joke. And so then they go out and, uh, and they investigate these things. And, you know, of course, the priest believes it's demonic, you know, then, then you have to figure out each, each show's episode's kind of a mystery. Like, is this person possessed? Are they faking it? Is there some kind of scheme they're doing? And it kind of goes along that. And there's a whole storyline that goes along with it, but each episode they go out and investigate something else. It's a pretty fun show. I mean, there are some, you know, there's some dark moments to it, but there's also a lot of comedy to it too. So it's, it's a little bit lighthearted. And, uh, I, I really enjoy it. I had not heard of this show. It was on CBS is when it aired a couple of years ago. And Paramount Plus ended up picking it up. And right now, all the first three seasons are all there on Paramount Plus, if you do have that. And the fourth season is coming out soon. I should have grabbed that date. Uh, the fourth season is coming out, I believe, in June. So you're going to be able to, to watch that as well on there. But it's three seasons to catch up. It doesn't take a whole lot of thinking to watch it. But it is pretty interesting, and there's some really good acting that happens in it. And I think it's I think it's pretty uh, a pretty fun show. And is this, is this real? Cross X Fighter is saying evil. Every villain is lemons. Every villain is lemons. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> Maybe that's a spoiler. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but yeah, this show is the show is pretty fun. So I would recommend this if you're looking. You know, it's it's not for kids. I'll say that. But it was. At least the first two seasons, I believe, were on CBS, so it is um, safe in that aspect. The Paramount Plus picked it up for the third season, so it does go a little bit, little bit more into uh, the language realm that uh, that you wouldn't see on normal television. But uh, it's a fun show. If you're looking for something just casual to watch and that'll kind of hook you in, you don't have to be too invested. I would recommend it. I love it. That looks like fun and yeah. a little different. I like how you're sort of changing it up. And when you first said evil, I was like, okay, so <laughs> so yeah. Curtis is queuing in um, on what Joshua is sharing. This is sort of oh. SpongeBob's joke. Yeah. 
I feel old now. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Very cool. Well, I love that. Thank you so much for Greg for sharing that. I've yeah. got one too for those of you who have Disney Plus. This is, you know, I love all things Marvel. This is Marvel. This is Marvel Studios Secret Invasion. This one's rated PG 13. And I imagine even if you're not a kid, you're going to really enjoy this. Now, this is an, a new like American TV miniseries created by Kyle Bradstreet for Disney+. Plus. Of course, those of you know, this is based on the Marvel's comics, supervillains. Um, and yeah, this is pretty cool. Mar Marvel Cinematic Universe, MCU, is going to, and it's going to take place after sort of the Spider-Man No Way Home uh, film that came out in 2021. So, yeah, really excited. Yeah. I love all things Marvel. It just, like, takes me away. I feel like, you know, it keeps it light. It's really – this is scheduled to premiere. So on, on Disney Plus, for those of us, you can watch it at home. Yeah. Do you know when this is coming out? Because I'm actually out of the loop. This would be something I would normally be knowing completely about. And, and I mean, I do know all about Secret Invasion, but I forgot that it's already coming out. I'm really excited about this. I'm, I'm glad you are reminding me right now. Yeah, it's coming out on June on June twenty first. So okay, June 21st. definitely, yeah, you can and and it's great. So convenient, you don't even have to go anywhere. You can just watch at home. Yeah, I love it when they do that. You know. Yeah, I know. And this is Samuel Jackson, Nick Fury. Uh, this is the whole. Th this is a whole storyline that's going to lead into, I believe, a couple of movies um, that are going to come out of this this uh, Secret Invasion show. But I, it's the first time where they really straight up focusing on Nick on Samuel L. Jackson. So it's going to be, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I am looking forward to this. And he's so brilliant. So this There's is going to be characters that are coming out of this. Uh, yeah, this is, this is right up my alley. Thank you for reminding me of this. No problem. And Carlos, <laughs> Carlos is here. Carlos, I think you're going to love this, right? This is that new, this is a new share. And by the way, can I just mention this? I see a lot of people talk about this on Twitter. Come on, people. For those of you who are releasing show or movies directly to the theater, you know, you have another streaming outlet. Just charge people. So people yeah. have options. People like to have choice. But this one, I love it. Disney Plus, if you have it, uh, Carlos, I'm guessing you're going to uh, catch this because I, I know that you are a uh, Marvel's fan as well, coming out on June 21st. This one's definitely, I think it's going to be awesome. Everything Samuel L. Jackson, I just feel like is brilliant. Yep. Yeah. I'm all on board for that. So thank you for reminding me of that one. Uh, I've got another one here. Now, actually, for anybody out there who is a subscriber to HBO Max, you probably noticed that your app has changed to now Max. So they, they combined HBO. Well, HBO and Max were, are, Cinemax were already together, but then now they brought in what is it? Discovery. And that's, that's all kind of wrapped into this giant weird app now. So you, it changed, mine changed over. You had to re-log in. So if you haven't logged into your HBO Max account in the last, uh, last week or so, you're going to notice the difference when you log in there. However, all the shows are still there that you were watching. And the one I wanted to highlight is a new one from HBO called White House Plumbers. You may have seen some trailers for it. You maybe have, you've heard of it, but I don't know a lot of people that are actually watching it myself anyway and uh i think you should it is great so the whole premise is it's it's the story of watergate right of oh. uh, nixon's investigators you know they're trying to but they're called white house plumbers because they're supposed to plug the leaks so documents are getting oh. leaked and yeah that's why they're called the white house plumbers cool. and they would uh they would go out and try to break into things. And that's obviously how they ended up bringing down the presidency is breaking into the democratic headquarters and stealing documents and getting caught. Uh, so that's all based on real people. It is a little bit of a, perhaps a comedic spin to a lot of it. Although what they were doing is pretty ridiculous too. <laughs> and, and it kind of portrays them as just kind of bumbling guys who try to do the best for the government and think they're, think they're very, very intelligent, even though they are not. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's a fun show. It is really good. And uh, as far as I'm concerned. So you've got Justin Thoreau and Woody Harrelson. They're the two leads. They're both great. Um, Justin Thoreau is pretty amazing in this. And uh, and yeah, it's it's been a lot of fun so far. Just the first two episodes. And there's a lot about Watergate that I, you know, I mean, I know what it is. Mm -hmm. But I didn't really know all the details of it. Mm -hmm. And so following along with this, and anytime I watch a show that's based on any kind of historical thing, I always end up like looking stuff up while I'm watching it and just to be like, Ooh, what happened there? And, uh, so I, that's how I watch a lot of shows. Uh, but this one, definitely check it out. If you haven't tried it yet, 
I would I would give it a give it a shot. Watch the first episode, see if you like it, and if you do, it's pretty fun. That's awesome. Like when you first said White House plumbers, I was <laughs> thinking about like you know what they said about Donald Trump stuffing documents into the toilet. <laughs> I literally, yeah, that'll be that'll that'll be the sequel. That'll be the sequel. Name. Well, yeah, Justin Throw, that should that looks like that looks like a great one. So thank you so much yeah. for sharing that. And I see Vicky joining us on um Facebook Live. Did you know this works, Erica? I mean, what do you think? I'm curious <laughs> what you think, right? Um, <laughs> and then Sadiq is even saying you had a haircut. Yes, Sadiq, you missed it. You're gonna have yeah. to watch the beginning of our episode. You can see, you can we can get I'll, the I explain it. Yeah. I explain it at the beginning of the of the episode. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right. I've got one here. Let me see what Vicky and Carlos and everybody thinks about this. This is called a love story indie movie. Okay. Um, so this one's called past lives is what it's called. Um, and it's by it's a 24s past lives is a new Ooh. film that follows two characters, uh, Nora and Hey Sung, who are deeply connected childhood friends. And so they were like taken apart and, you know, Nora's family emigrates to South Korea. And it, the story comes alive with two decades later, how they're reunited here in the United States in New York City. Um, and yeah, it's like that heartwarming modern rom romance. I love these. So um, yeah, I'm looking at, sorry. I was looking at that right now. I, I recognize those actors. I don't know their names, but I, I do recognize them from other things. Uh, yeah. Anything A24 does, I'm it's usually epic. yeah, I'm usually gonna want to watch it. They they do such a good job with so many of their movies. I mean, a lot of them are really strange in, in good ways. So mm -hmm. yeah, an A24 film. I'll, I'll yeah. watch that. This will be great. Unfortunately, though, for those of you, this is gonna be only in theater. So this is gonna be in theaters oh, really? next Friday, June 2nd. I know this is this is my thing. I'm like, come on, people, yeah. give us options. They should actually, I think they should release streaming soon and just charge people and like so people don't have to go to theaters because yeah, it's kind of an ordeal anyway. But um, so but this is in theaters. This is gonna this is PG 13, it'll be in theaters next Friday. If you want to check this, I'm probably gonna wait on this, but I Really, I really, really like this, but I'm probably gonna wait until it becomes go streaming. Yeah, but yeah I think this A4, yeah, right. Yep, yep, A24. Man, I'll I'll watch it's whatever really they put good. out. So I probably shouldn't say that, but yeah, it's true. I'll, I'll give I'll give pretty much anything they put out a shot. So uh, awesome. <laughs> uh, all right, I've got one last one here, and this is something that this is is specifically. Be, being in the Northwest and a Trailblazers fan, you, this is my kind of connection to this person, but there's a lot of people that have different different ways that they're connected to it. I'm talking about former basketball player Bill Walton. And ESPN is putting out a 30 for 30 documentary. I couldn't find a trailer for it, so we've got the, we've got the website for it. Um, for those who don't know, Bill Walton uh, won the NBA championship uh, and MVP here with the Trailblazers. That was back in 1977, also the last time. The Blazers won a championship, so it's been a while. And uh, but he's he, he then went on to play for the Celtics. He's an announcer now. So if you watch any kind of basketball games, college or or pros, you probably have heard Bill Walton talking. The way that he speaks is has been kind of it's very unique, and it's also been lampooned so many times. And there's so many different uh, takes and SNL takes on him. Uh, the way that he he talks, but he's just a very interesting guy. And this is going to be a documentary series on him, kind of chronicling his whole life. Back in when he was here in Portland, he was friends with the Grateful Dead. He used to ride his bike to, to games. You know, and this is the MVP of, of the NBA at the time. I, I couldn't imagine that happening now with a, just a guy riding his bike to, to go, you know, a seven-foot guy riding <laughs> his bike to, to, down to the, to the Coliseum. But so it's, it kind of chronicles all of that chronicles, you know, him in college and then through his career as a broadcaster and everything else. It's called the luckiest guy in the world because that's what he said about himself many times. Hmm. Uh, you see him there in tie dye. He's, he wears tie dye a lot because he's still he's basically a hippie. He was a hippie hmm. basketball player <laughs> from the 70s. And I'm really looking forward to this to to see how they chronicle it. And this is the other thing, too, for ESPN. So they're 30 for 30 series. If you have not checked those out, there's quite a few of them on Disney Plus mm -hmm. that you can you can watch some of the older ones. And what they do is they take a story that's 
maybe it's about an athlete. Maybe it's about a sport. Maybe it's about something that's kind of tangential to sports. There's always some kind of sport tie-in, but they really explore a lot of different topics. And each one is, is usually directed by somebody else. And they go in depth and give you pretty amazing stories that happen there. I mean, it's all kinds of stuff that is on there from scandals to, you know, Michael Jordan or whoever. Uh, and this one, though, the focusing on Bill Walton, and and it's going to be a four part series, which is a little bit different than than they usually do. So first two episodes are out on June sixth, second two are on June thirteenth. If you have ESPN Plus, they're going to be av available immediately on that. So some people have that package with Hulu, Disney Plus, and ESPN Plus. Um, that might be a way to to watch those right away. But <clears throat> I am looking forward to this. I, I think this is going to be a really interesting story. Well, I think uh, Carlos is loving it too. Carlos uh, is um, is a big fan of Big Walt Bill Walton. I see, and Vicky is saying very cool story. So yeah, so very cool. Thank you so much, yeah. Greg, for sharing that. That does look good. I, I mean, who doesn't love a good happy athlete hippie story? I mean, yeah, I mean, I, mean, I want to know. Good. I want to know. I probably we'll get the behind the scenes stuff too of whatever he was doing in the seventies here in Portland. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Amazing, amazing. All right, cool. Well, I got one more before we wrap it up today. I think it's a great one. This is a nostalgic movie. It's Indiana Jones in the Dial of Destiny. Yeah. It's rated PG-13. And so uh, I'm so excited about it. Uh, fun fact, I will tell you, the daughter-in-law of Harrison Ford is actually a friend of mine. And so, wow. yes, this one does, in fact, star Harrison Ford once again. So, and it's directed by James Mangold, uh, starring Harrison Ford still as Indiana Jones. I just got to say, doesn't Indiana, doesn't Harrison Ford look so amazing considering his age? I mean. Yeah, he's, he's well into his 80s, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. Um, I will absolutely go see this in the theater. This is one where I will go. Uh, yeah. This is yeah. probably worth it. Yeah. The last one, the Crystal Skull. I mean, yeah, it was not the greatest Indiana Jones movie by by any means, but it's still just an Indiana Jones movie. I mean, if you don't overthink it, it's it's fine. And this looks really good, though. This, this one's this good. One that, I'm going to the theater for this one. I'm going to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, that's you already have me. As soon as, soon as you say Indiana Jones, like, yeah, all right. And you know, Indiana Jones, Indiana Ford, Jones he's Star Wars. He's not going to do a sixth movie. Yeah. You, you, I mean, if you're an indie fan, you got to watch this, right? Indiana Jones, I mean, it's just one of those things that Greg said. You can't overthink it. You just got to just enjoy it. It's just yeah. pure, fun entertainment, how movies should be. Yeah. And Phoebe uh, Waller-Bridge, too. I like her a lot. So that I see that she's in this. Must be the cohort for this thing. So she's great. She's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm there. I'm I see there. it. Yeah, look at Sadiq is saying D.H. Harrison Ford, oh, yeah, fighter. Probably. Haven't seen him in a long time. Um, yeah, Vicky is saying that. he's wearing well, very much a yes for her. Yeah, this is. I'm with you, like a Indiana Jones. I mean, who didn't love this series when you were a kid, right? When you were younger, yep. which is fun. It was like a feel good movie. So I feel like much to look forward to in June. Yeah, a lot. So awesome. Well, I've got some stuff to watch now. I'm, I thank you for uh, for informing me of these <laughs> and, and reminding me. No, and thank you so much for always giving us these more. Like, I love it because, um, Greg, you always find these really unique things, to be honest with that, would never fall on my radar. So thank you so much for sharing those as well. Well, and thanks, everybody, too, for tuning in. You know, if you have suggestions, please send those to us. Uh, we always like hearing from everybody. So sharing the show is great and letting us know you know, something cool that you found. I still love it when everybody's sending me tech stories and topics. So please continue to do that. But if you have some shows or a movie or you're like, Hey, nobody's watching this. This is really cool. Let us know. Cause there's so much out there. There's no way any one person can know all of the shows that are happening on so many different networks. So a lot of gems, I feel like get overlooked and that's, that's what we're, we're trying to bring to the light here. Absolutely. So if you do do that, make sure to tag at Greg Nibbler and yes. at Winnie Sun. So we see it and we can properly thank you and we can try and add it to the, sh the future shows as well. Yeah. But a huge congratulations, of course, to the one and only Curtis Peak on his graduation this week. We're yeah. so excited for him. And congratulations, of course, <laughs> Greg, as well on your show. We <laughs> congratulate for all of you. And we so appreciate those. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. We congratulate all of you for tuning in. We thank you so much for tuning in. And um, we're looking forward to coming back next yes. week, Greg. We're going to yep. be here in June, yeah? Yep. Uh, we should be back next Tuesday, next Friday. If not, we'll, we'll update you on social. Um, yep. With that, I think we're a wrap. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Bye. Bye.